he himself pursuing music and you know playing shows around the world i would have probably said no but at the same time if you ask me do you want to or see yourself making some sort of a difference to the world i'm sure i would have said yes and i think this is a case for all of us we all have that inner desire to make some sort of a difference to the world in our own capacity but somewhere along that path from being a teen to an adult the somehow fades away when i was finishing my high school my parents were clear to me or they told me that from when i was 18 i had to be financially independent which meant i had to either take student loans or start earning my own money and they said they would be there for me in case things went wrong and uh, if i hadn't have like a backup option they would be there for me but they gave me the freedom to do what i wanted and to learn from my successes and mistakes and i am immensely grateful for this parents in the audience this is probably the best thing you can do for your children because of this i learned to be financially aware of my expenses i learned to build a community or a support system that i could fall back on and most importantly i learned to take important decisions for myself regarding my life so these decisions worked some of them completely failed but i'm sure i learned a lot in this process and so i began a journey that was slightly different from the mainstream at 16 i joined the green school in bali indonesia which is one of the most unique schools in the world and where i won a scholarship for my senior year there i walked to school ate locally grown food i recycled my own waste learned hands on and led completely a very sustainable eco friendly and carbon neutral life at 18 um, when i graduated from the green school with a high gpa is when i realized that a lot of colleges that i wanted to join didn't accept this green school curriculum So naturally I was very disappointed um I was left doubting my decisions but at the same time I saw this as an opportunity to try something new so impulsively I wrote to the Raghudikshit project who I came to know I was looking for a guitar player and the next morning I received an email back inviting me to join the band and um I ended up playing over 120 shows in the band at dream venues like the Glastonbury festival and the Sydney Opera House At 19, I co-founded my own band, Venture and Toast, which has a considerable listening base now across the country and even the world. We tour regularly around the country, and we try to make a difference in the lives of people in our own capacity. And at 20, when a lot of my friends were, oops, okay, when a lot of my friends were um, getting out of college, was when I finally enrolled into Berkeley online to complete my degree. Now a lot of relatives thought I was completely crazy to be doing what I was doing, this ultra approach that I took. But I feel there is nothing wrong with this approach that I've taken. You know, a um, lot of these decisions were very impulsive that I took, but it is because of these decisions that opened up so many new opportunities and so many new experiences that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise. And yes, um, a lot of people say I was lucky or I was fortunate, but fortune doesn't just come at you if you wait for it to hit you. The fact is, none of this wouldn't have happened if I didn't send that email. And I think that's a part of putting yourself in a position for opportunities to strike you. And what enabled me to take the opportunity were the hours that I spent in my bedroom practicing my guitar. And when the opportunity came, I knew I had to trust my gut and take it. even though it went against initial plan and it seemed intimidating at first and um yeah i believe this can apply to any field you know when something as soon as tomorrow is unpredictable when there are so many changes happening around you there are new technologies there are new trends one has to constantly keep on adapting and evolving to make the most of what's around you um steve jobs didn't start out knowing what he was building would end up being apple but what set him apart were those those tiny baby steps that he took those short term focus goals that in in a in a whole led to something something bigger and he was consistently adapting and evolving to the world around him and that is something that we try to put into practice at venture at us 
When China Post was formed as a collaborative project in 2015 to create simple, honest music that we could relate to and what we felt comfortable and true about us doing. Um, so the biggest catch, so now we are a four-piece band, it started off as a two-piece band, but now we call ourselves uh, four South Indian boys trying to play English folk music. Now the biggest catch when we started off was that we were from Kerala and as Bruce mentioned earlier, we were writing in English and um, that was initially very hard because we were from Kerala in a, in a country where regional music is so popular. How could we break out and reach a larger audience where um, there was no support from mainstream radio or television? And um, we didn't want to follow the trend at the time which was to take old folk music and add elements and call it our own because we wanted to write our own music and put it out there. Our approach was simple. We had simple sing-along melodies that we wrote, which is what came naturally to us, and lyrics that people could relate to, like talking about the joys of little things in life and experiences that we've all gone through. And um, when it came naturally to us, we included a line or two of Hindi or Tamil in between all this English lyric. Now we didn't force this in any way and the line or two of Hindi or Tamil may have been just one or two lines of the whole song. And also we wanted to be that band that was there for the people and it was music that people could go to and listen and at least for that, that small period, that short period of time, they could forget their worries and feel positive. And so all of this totally ended up working wonders for us. Our first release called Beautiful World uh, went on to reach more years than we expected and that was what put us in the independent music chart or independent music radar of the country. And with every release, uh, we wanted to reach across different social and different age groups and with different demographics. So for our video for Believe, uh, which is a song we released recently, we wanted it to appeal as much to the, our mothers and grandmothers as much, as much as it did to the millennials. And um, yeah, so when the rest of the population was watching Netflix or listening to Ed Sheeran, we knew we had to give them something comparable in quality with the obviously restrained budget. So um, we wanted, so even though we have only like maybe 10 releases in the last three years, we made sure that everything was the best it could be and we made sure that we invested everything into these releases. And so um, that comes to the last thing on the slide of investing in ourselves, which we took very seriously and we still don't make much money from the band, but we hope that in the larger run, a lot of people listen to the music and um, and and what makes what we do even more special and even more gratifying are stories like this. Um, one of our friends, Sanjana, uh, went to teach at a school called the Haji Public School in Kashmir. Now this is a school that is so remote that there are no motorable roads, you have to go on horseback to get there. And to teach English to these students, uh, Sanjana introduced them to a song called Firefly. Now these students took to the song so much that they started singing it for their assemblies and they wrote the lyrics of the song on posters and they put it up all across the school. And uh, these students hadn't seen video screens, they were seeing video screens for the first time and they sent us back videos of them singing this song. And that was immensely heartwarming and I would love to play a couple of minutes of them singing uh, of, of this video and uh, it can really show how much music can help connect across different boundaries and age groups.
know what happened when Chai met Toast? When Chai met Toast, they decided to sing. I okay, will... Kashif, what happened when Chai met Toast? We put Toast in Chai and then they drank it. So apart from this, we get so many messages from people saying how our music has made a difference in their lives and, and it's incredibly heartwarming, incredibly special and we're proud to have our EP, our latest EP Believe, um, which debuted as number one on the Indian bestsellers and um, it also one of the single, singles coach from it was consistently in the top 50 pop charts and um, yeah. I feel we all have to think of finished as an F word for all of us, you know, like I read this recently, every day presents an opportunity to learn more, to be more, to grow more, to learn more and um, if you think of our lives as a permanent beta, you, 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 you seem to realize that there is consistent development to do on yourself, that you're never a finished product and you have to always consistently keep on adapting and evolving to the world around you. And so a year from now, I don't know where I'll be or what I'll be doing, but I know I'll be trying to make some sort of a difference to the world. And if someone asks you what your plans in life are, um, if they, if you don't know, if you don't have an answer to them, as long as you're working hard, you're enjoying what you're doing and you're consistently adapting to what's around you, I'm sure the next big opportunity will be right around the corner. Thank you.